Okay everyone, so I hope you enjoyed your five minute break and we left off talking about the level system, which just to recap is levels one to 10. I know some people get confused because at Redkin we use, they have a level 12 and I think there's even a level 11 still of tubes of color. That is not a natural level. Those are um, extra lift and then one of them is a super lift and that's a type of blonde. So don't be confused with that. Only know that there's levels one through 10. There's no such thing as a zero. Someone came up with a zero and I'm like, there's no such thing as that. Level one is pitch black and level 10 is your beautiful platinum blonde. That's how you remember that. And then everything in between is a different shade. It will get confusing when you're in the field because different brands have their own version of what a dark blonde is and what a dark brown is. Some brands a level six is a light brown, other lines it's a light or a medium blonde. So typically too, um, something to remember is that you typically don't find many people that are a pure level one and you don't find many people who are a pure level 10. So most people fall within like the medium range. Some people are about two or three. I would say most of the world is about a natural level two or three. And then a lot of people get confused about redheads. What about redheads? Redheads can have a level. What you're seeing with the redhead is the undertone. So when you look at the undertone chart, you'll see that some reds could be about like a level four or five. Some of them like who are more of a red orangey could be a level seven, eight. It's really important too to use, um, if you use your camera, use the grayscale and try to match it to the swatch. There's a way of doing that and you'll be able to kind of figure out what level your natural redhead is. Redheads are a little bit different um, because they don't really, they're not included in the level chart. So it is a little confusing, but you will get it when you're seeing it and that when you are able to match a certain shade to it. I know some people, another way of doing it, they take the red or copper swatches and try to match it to a person's natural color and then you get a good result that way. So just to read off what your levels are, level one is black, level two is dark brown, level three is medium brown, level four is light brown, level five is lightest brown, level six is dark blonde, level seven is medium blonde, level eight is light blonde, level nine is very light blonde, and 10 is your lightest blonde. Again, it will vary per manufacturer. So another thing to remember too about the neutrals and you're working with the N series is that they tend to be very dark and if you do an NN, it's even more drabby. Think of a neutral, the way I'd think of a, like an N, so like a one N, 10 N, is if you have a cup of coffee, that's my one N, I add a little bit of cream to that and then it becomes lighter and lighter and lighter. You still have that underlying brownish pigment, but it's getting very diluted as I'm pouring more cream in. If you wanna remember how the NNs work, think about it being like um, cola. If I pour out some cola and I take water and I put it in the cola, it's gonna get lighter and lighter, but it's still drabby. So your ends can be very um, drabby if you don't add the right things when covering gray. That's something we'll talk about. So when we identify natural level, we're gonna take some of the hair up and we're gonna put the swatch under. We're gonna to try to match it as best we can. Typically, you're gonna find this out in natural lighting or if you have a really good ring light, you can find the natural level with ease. Also know that um, available light is critical when you're working with hair color. Some salons have hair color lights because what happens is uh, in the salon, different lights can cast off the hair and give you an off tone look or a, um, a look that you don't want. So some salons have a warmer look that can make your blondes look incredibly scary. Or if you have um, too blue of a light, it can make your reds look muddy and brown. There's actually really good pictures that were online. One of them went viral, but look up like blonde in different lights and they have one color blonde and they show you in different lightings how this blonde looks and it is powerful. A lot of contests that if you're gonna enter or through Instagram, they make you get a ring light. That way you're able to see the uh, color appropriately. So now it brings us to our next topic, which is 50 shades of gray hair, um, which is also a really awesome class if you ever go to the summit. Gray hair is hair that has lost its pigment and it is normally associated with aging. So what happens is the gray hair, there's different theories about this and I won't go too in detail on them, but one of them is that we lose our pigment little by little. Gray hair is hair that has no pigment, but the, um, because it has no pigment, it will make the color look drabber and the book claims that we have um, different pigments in our hair. So like we'll talk about the blue pigment, red pigment, yellow pigment. That's not quite true. What it means is that we have different melanin and as the melanin starts to degrade in our hair, it starts to get darker and darker and darker. So your blondes that were once luscious and blonde are now drabby by the time they're um, 50 or 45 or earlier. Um, and then what happens is it gets grayer and grayer and grayer. Gray hair is also coarser, it's thicker, it's got a thicker cuticle layer and it requires special formulations because of gray hair, because it has no pigment. When you mix a color, it will re a permanent hair color, it reacts with your natural color to produce the final result. So the best case I can give you is if this is another really good example. Never take a high lift red and put it on someone who has a lot of gray hair. Oh my gosh, you will turn them salmon color. 
if someone has um, red hair and you want to cover it, so you, you they wanted to do um, like a, a 6R, they have all gray, and what you have to do is mix your neutral in. You have the option, here's my little pro tip to you, gray covers really good with straight up neutral. If you're doing a redhead, do gold instead of the neutral. Take out the N, put a G in there, and put the red. So if they're 50% um, gray, half the formula, a G formula, so whether it be a pure G or an NG, if you're not comfortable using a pure G, gold, and then the half of it be that 6R, and that will give them that beautiful red they want. Now, if you just took that red and threw it on the gray, it'll turn an off-color pink that is hideous. Also, some colors, if you don't um, do them on gray, you're not supposed to do them on gray hair, they can pull the base, so some high lift browns can turn green or blue, and it's not a pretty green or blue. So also know that color theory, um, this is how light is perceived by the eye. So this is a theory about how this works. It uses a lot about light in the basics of electricity. So we'll read chapter 13 or watch my video to get a refresher. Know that a base color is the predominant tone of a color. And once you know color theory, you'll see how each color manufacturer associates base colors with color lines. So base color, um, all that means is uh, what you're looking to base color, you can have an R series, an N series, a G series, that's your base color. Now, it's also important to know that some colors have no base, so they're a pure pigment. Now, if you have a no base color, you're gonna get more fashion results. Your violets, your blue violets, your reds. Some golds have no base, which are a little risky because it comes, it becomes a little bit um, too yellow. Also know that the reason why you can cover hair successfully with gold is because um, when you're coloring, that gold is not a pure yellow. Most lines have the gold blended with a little bit of ash, and that allows for coverage because it is a cooler color. So that's a pretty cool fact that I learned recently, and I've been trying it, and I'm like, oh, it works a lot better. So the law of color. Your law of color is a system for understanding color relationships. When combining colors, you will always get the same result from the same combination. Equal parts red and blue mixed together will always make violet. Equal parts blue and yellow will always make green. Equal parts red and yellow always make orange. And that will help you understand the color wheel. So it's kind of like, you know, we kind of learned this when we were younger. When we're making paints or painting, it's a fun little activity. You mix um, blue and red, you're always going to get violet. You're never going to get, like, yellow if you mix blue and red, right? That's, it's a, it's a law, so it's proven. Also know that anything that you put blue into will make the color cool. That's a really cool fact to learn. Also know that your um, gray hair will uh, come in different percents. Every manufacturer has their own swatch, so this one is a 25, uh, 50, 75, and 100%. Or no, 90%. Some of them have 100%. So your 30% um, will have more pigmented than gray hair. Your 50% is an even mix of pigmented and gray hair. Your 70 and 90% is more gray than pigmented. Most remaining pigmented is located in the back of the head, so it'll be mostly gray here and it's darker here. And 100% virtually no pigment tends to look white. Your 100% gray is more common in a natural redhead because they go like white really quickly and there is like zero pigment. With um, respect to gray hair, some people have gray in different areas. Some have it just in the front. Others have a big patch here, hair, uh, color, and then here. This will also affect how you're mixing hair color. Don't think you can mix a bowl and do a one size fits all for everything. That's not how it works. You'll have to customize color that. And now we're gonna talk about our colors. So this should be a quick refresher. Primary, secondary, and tertiary. Your primary colors are the pure fundamental ones, your red, blue, and yellow. You cannot make a primary from scratch. It comes, um, you can't make yellow, yellow just exists. You can't make red and blue, they just exist. So that is that. Know that blue is the strongest of the primary colors and it's the only cool primary color. Blue can bring depth or darkness to any color. It will turn the color very smoky. So if you add blue to yellow, you're gonna make it ashen or green. Red is a medium primary color. Adding red to blue base colors will make them appear lighter. Adding red to yellow colors will cause them to appear darker. So think about, and it sounds confusing, but think about yellow. Yellow is the lightest primary color. If you add red to that, you're gonna create orange, and orange tends to be a lot darker than a nice um, pale yellow. Yellow is the weakest of the primary colors. When you add yellow to other colors, the resulting color will look lighter and brighter. So if you add some yellow to your, um, what is it, just a pure red, it'll make it like a coppery, so that'll be taking that red, make it a little bit lighter, make it a little bit more richer. If you look at your hair colors, think about your coppers, which are your um, golden orange. I know orange is kind of a dirty word in color. Um, orange will be a lot brighter than just a pure um, RR or an R series color. Your secondary color is obtained by mixing equal parts of two primary colors. Your secondary colors are green, orange, and violet. Green is a combination of blue and yellow, and orange is equal combinations of red and yellow. Violet is an equal combination of blue and red. 
and your tertiary color is an intermediate color achieved by mixing a secondary color and its neighboring primary color on the color wheel in equal amounts. There are blue-green, blue-violet, red-violet, red-orange, yellow-orange, and yellow-green. Natural-looking hair color is made up of a combination of primary, secondaries, and tertiary colors. Technically, you would call that a quaternary color. It's important to note too that white is the absence of color and black is the um, saturation of color. And there's some debate on that too, so it's pretty cool. Um, so typically we do use tertiary colors in the tubes, so we'll have our ROs, which is red-orange, we'll have RVs, which are red-violets, or we can even have VR, which is violet-reds. So you do use your tertiary colors, and there's even advanced color classes where you go in detail with that, because it's just so neat. They also have some really cool activities. Try them out, take some modeling clay, play around with the clay, and try to create the color wheel. It's incredible, the results you'll get. I always have my students go into a magazine, cut out photos, make the color wheel of um, or not the color wheel, the level 1 through level 10 and then some other undertones. I also do another activity where I do the clay activity, I do the sugar cookie activity where you uh, do the, um, you make a cookie and you make the color wheel with the cookie. So read that activity, it's pretty fun. So your complementary colors, here's the fun part. These are primary and secondary colors positioned to directly opposite each other on the color wheel. Complementary colors include blue, orange, red, and green, yellow, and violet. Complementary colors neutralize each other. So think, when you have yellow hair or there's a lot of yellow in your hair, what do you do? You use a purple toner or a purple shampoo. That tones it out. Now, knowing the color wheel is important, but I wanna give you a word of caution. What they tell you right here is, for the reference of color correction, is not quite true. Color wheel works, but it works in one direction. Anytime you have warmth, you add cool. So, for example, don't think if you have violet hair, you're gonna put yellow over it to balance. That will not work. What you will do is cause it to turn an off color that looks really scary. So it only works in one direction and that's cool for toning. You can't neutralize green by adding red to it. That will become the scariest brown you'll ever see. It, what you'll do in the salon is use a hair color remover. Um, non, what is it, non, I almost said non-oxidative. No, that's not true. Uh, hair color remover, oxidative hair color remover, if it's oxidative dye, if it's semi-permanent color, you take your distilled water, mix a little bit of bleach, put it on there, open that cuticle, wash it out, and then you put your color over your canvas. So also make sure you know how to remove color. So this book does tell you how to make beautiful color, but it doesn't tell you how to remove those colors with color remover, and that's what drives you crazy. The old version did. So this is how the colors work. When the hair is red, you're gonna use green to tone. When the hair is orange, you're gonna use blue to tone or balance. And when the hair is yellow, use violet to balance. But when the hair is violet, green, and blue, you can't use the adjacent colors to neutralize it. You'll have to remove the color and then tone it to what you want. So when formulating hair color, your goal is to emphasize or distract from skin tone, skin tone or eye color. You may wanna neutralize or refine unwanted tones in the hair. So pretty much um, there's different ways of using colors to complement each other's faces. Typically if the person's skin is a little bit on the warmer side, you wanna make the hair a little bit warmer. And there's always some exceptions to that too. So when we talk about color, we have tone and hue. Tone, which is also called the hue, is a balance of color. And the tone or hue answers the question of what color to use based on the client's desired results. The tones can be described as warm, cool, or neutral. If they want a warm red, you're looking for a copper. If they want a warm brown, it's like a golden brown. If they want a cool brown, it's gonna be an ashy brown. And if they just want something that's regular brown, it'll be a neutral, typically. Also, don't get in the habit of just using, this drives me crazy. When I see someone mix one tube of color to put it on someone's head, I'm like, hmm, we are colorists. We don't come in a box. We actually make something custom. So if you're gonna add mostly neutral, add a little kick in there of like a, a kicker or add um, a little bit of warmth, something just to make it your own custom color. Because if you're just using one tube of color, what's to say that person can't get the same stuff on Amazon and do it at home? So be creative. We don't come in a box. <laughs> So know that warm tones can look lighter than their actual level. The warm tones are golden, orange, red, and yellow. Some hair colors use words such as auburn, amber, copper, strawberry, and bronze, which will be a really good way to describe them to a color client. Cool tones look deeper than their actual level. These tones are blue, green, and violet, and some are described as smoky or ash. Natural tones are warm tones that are described as sandy or tan, and that will typically be your beige. A lot of your beiges tend to fall in that category because when you ask what beiges, people will say, oh, it's cool, it's warm. Some people say, well, it depends, and that's a better answer. Gold is gonna be your sandy blonde. So also note too that uh, when you're looking at the swatch, this is what I think is so incredible, line up at the same level a 6N, a 6G, 
and then a 6A or 6 ash. Look at them side to side. You can actually see this. It's really cool how that gold looks so much brighter than the ash, and it's like, wow, this is powerful. That should also make you think when you're formulating, you gotta be really careful. And know that when you're formulating, um, the swatch book is important. And I don't know if it tells you in here uh, later on, but I don't recommend showing the swatch book to a client. It's really a gray area. Some do, they'll show it once and then that's it. Because what happens is if you do the color, the client will either hold you to that color or they'll say, no, it's too red. When in reality, a lot of the swatches are not done at the actual level they're done at. They're done on clear hair and it comes out way different. So what I always say is make your own swatches. If someone comes in with really long hair that's virgin and they get a heavy haircut, you can take the hair, use duct tape and make your own swatches. And that's really important to do so you get in the habit of not only saving money, but also like seeing like, oh look, maybe the swatch book wasn't like um, on point. It gives you a better idea to learn the color line. Also know that intensity refers to the strength of the color. It can be described as soft, medium, or strong. Color intensifiers are tones that can be added to a hair color formula to intensify the result. These will be your kickers and you can either use them straight up but they're very bright. You can also use them to maybe add a little bit of red to the color or a little bit of yellow to soften it. They come in permanent and demi-permanent colors. Also know that intense, if you have uh, shades on, um, red's another good example. If you're looking at like a 3RR, a 6RR, and a 7RR, that 3RR is gonna be more intense. It's gonna have a strong, intense result because it's gonna be a lot of red pigment and that's why it will also look a lot darker because there's more of it. So know that base color is a predominant tone of the color. Each color is identified by a number and a letter. The number indicates the level and the le letter indicates the tone. For example, 6G is a level six dark blonde with a G gold base. So also know that when you select a formula, you wanna know what the client likes and dislikes, and this is something you have to talk about. Well, what kind of tones do you like? Do you, do you want some warmth in your hair? If they show you a picture, this is where you use your professional judgment. Clients will try to use terminology to impress you. What they don't know is that what they're saying might not be the same thing. So if they show you a client with caramel highlights, they'll, they, they'll go, oh, that's like an ash, that's caramel. Ash is not caramel. So you're gonna explain to them, what's well, a little bit on the warmer side, it's a little bit more bronze. Do you like that bronze look? Or do you like something that's more cool tone? Also show them um, pictures of your previous work. That might help them kind of gauge what they want. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna break here and then we're gonna jump into the, um, I'll finish up some terminology that I just wanna go over and then we'll jump into the types of hair color and we'll see where we can go from there.